Phil, did you want to start? Yeah, uh, please, and thank you. And uh, I would just like to point out that this is uh, the director's first uh, round. And uh, what a quantum leap uh, towards uh, a more excellent yeah. audit and compliance with GASB. Yeah, and let me, I thank you for bringing that up because I did want to, to touch on that as well. Um, you know, generally when there's a changeover at the finance director position, the audit can be a little choppy uh, the next year as they try and learn um, the new position. But it really was seamless with Christy. And not only do you see the effects here um, in the unmodified opinions and the work on the GASB statements, but, um, you know, from a general standpoint, there were no additional journal entries or unusual adjustments or things. The records were in the same um, you know, in the same general good condition that they had been, and sometimes with a change in guard, sometimes that uh, lapses. But I did want to let you, as the board, know that Christy and her staff both did a, all did a great job. Um, she continues to bat a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Um, I'm just going to go quick. I'm just some quick questions. If you can give them layman's terms and bullets right back. On page four, you talk about. Uh, uh, I mean, an excess of liabilities over, uh, it was, it's a $55 million corporation, is that what you're saying in that position? Uh, let's see, this, yeah, this is from Christie's um, MDNA. Page four. Four. Yeah, and let me just back that up to what I look at, <laughs> which is my number. $55 million and change? Yeah, and that should be the net position. Um, and, and that, if you could explain that in layman's terms so that you, where this is televised. Uh, net position, um, I would say if you could think of this as a personal financial statement, this would be your net worth if you were an individual, but extrapolate it out to a town. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's a, a, an incredibly valuable corporation. The net position from 2013 to 2014 increased by almost $3 million. That is comment. correct. Yep. Quick comment on that. Is that good or bad? Um, no, that is good. Um, any, any time that you see an overall approval or Im improvement in the net position, that's a good thing. Wonderful. Uh, the the Gatsby, uh We start out at a tour on, on page seven. Totals at historical cost, 2014 is 105 million dollars. We have depreciated 55 million. We're on page seven on your your graph. Could you uh, explain oh. that that increased by 2.35 million? Is that an expense? If you could explain that in layman's terms. Sure. Let me take a look again. Sorry, I'm not as familiar with the. The, uh, uh -huh. the management portion yeah. here, but let me look at that. Uh, page seven. 2013 to 14 goes up uh, 2.35 million, the uh, accumulated depreciation. Could you explain that significance of it, that as an expense? Sure. Um, when an asset is capitalized, um, to, to move it over as an asset, there was an actual expenditure during the year or in the preceding <coughs> fiscal years. Right. And to consider an asset, it's removed from the expenditure. And instead of being charged to one financial period, um, the expense is charged over the useful life of the asset. So that is the total amount of uh, accumulated prior assets that are being depreciated. That is their 1 20th if it was a 20-year asset or 1 10th of the amount. Basically, it's trying to match the expense to the benefit that is received in the financial period. So that, that's just a difference in how the accounting um, the accounting goes between the uh, accrual and other statements. Thank you, Scott. And for uh, again, for the layman, is there? Uh, can you extrapolate that towards a uh, in terms of a capital improvement plan or acquisition uh, program? Is is that an expense, a degradation of assets that will at yes. some point have to be? So this really is a two point three five million dollar expense. If yes, you would, it generically. is a yes. Generically, it's a it's a two point three million dollar expense on the accrual statements. Some expenses get removed to capitalize them, but this is the offsetting um, expenditure. Thank you. So that's about a 10% uh, friction on our, on our budget, a little less um, every year, or th at least this last year. Uh, the, could you comment on uh, the success that the finance director uh, and the um, uh, financial staff did in uh, the long-term debt with that transition and a gain of 438000 Yeah, there was a um, debt refunding during the year. And um, again, just simply by refinancing and taking advantage of the change in interest rates, um, again, the, the economic gain, which is generally disclosed, is the savings of present value savings of four hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars over the over the life of that debt service, as opposed to not doing anything. Uh, if you just stayed and, and paid the course without dealing with that, um, that's the 
the today dollars um, savings over the term of those bonds. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, in my uh, opening remarks tonight, I talked about uh, what a wonderful corporation, what a great town this is. Uh, this is on page 18. The town of Hampton is a municipal corporation governed by an elected five-member board of selectmen and Mr. Welch, the town manager. Uh, and, of course, our bosses are the citizens of Hampton. And, again, it's a $55 million corporation with uh, almost $30 million in expenditures on the uh, municipal side. And uh, I'm pretty impressed by that. Um, trust funds, good to go on that. Is it very unusual for a town to have as much money as we do in the trust funds? The real estate trust is unique. Um, the I would say your expendable and capital reserve funds are typical, but um, again, that's one of the unique aspects of um, that real estate portfolio, which is now in the uh, in the trust fund, um, is a unique component. And you know, certainly most communities don't have that type of uh, operating offset with the revenue that that is typically generated from there. Thank you. On page 21, uh, you've got a graph at the bottom. The municipal portion of our tax rate is 7.24. Correct. For $20 million in change. The state of New Hampshire is 2.52, roughly a third of that, with a total of $6.747 million in change going out the door. Where's that money go? Um, the 6.7. Yeah, the $6.7 million. Yep. That is the um, state school assessment mm -hmm. that gets reapportioned back to the communities. Okay. Um, and when you, if you were to take a look at the, uh, it's not within the audit here, but as part of the tax rate setting process, um, part of that gets reallocated back to the town in the forms of um, payments towards Hampton School District and Winnicott School District's um, assessments in the form of state aid. Okay, and so that, that $6.7 million does not go to the benefit. Uh, Hampton taxpayers pay it, but if we receive no benefit from that, is that correct? Well, the, I guess the way I would say the benefit is received through the independent school districts. Okay. So uh, while you are the agent to collect all of those funds, um, the town of Hampton only, you know, receives $7.24. The rest goes out, um, you know, the county portion just goes out to the county. Mm -hmm. The school portions, uh, that goes back and is redirected to Winnicott and Hampton School District. Okay, and I'm, I'm sure it's... And they have a separately voted budget that okay. comes into those numbers. Okay, and I'm sure we're not getting back $6.74 million, but that is uh, one-third of the municipal side of the house just to go to that state fund, and that's significant. Page 22, uh, 1N, claims and judgments. Again, talking about the outstanding caliber of this corporation. Uh, the last sentence, there were no significant claims or judgments at year-end. Please comment. Yeah, um, each year, um, again, a unique thing with the in-house counsel, we get a detailed legal letter from Attorney Gerald summarizing, um, you know, any potential suits or issues. Um, <clears throat> and if anything rises to the level where it potentially needed to be disclosed or need, needs to be a contingency, we account for it. And based upon that review at year end of ongoing matters that, um, you know, there's nothing um, additional to add. Thank you. Page 29, uh, compensated absences mm -hmm. uh, on the graph up top. That uh, incurred uh, additional red in excess of $112,000. For the town right now, it is uh, very close to $1.3 million. Mr. Welch has a remedy for uh, some of that in, in partiality. Please uh, comment. Sure. Um, as far as a compensated absence liability is concerned, um, I would say, uh, again, there, there are various mechanisms that towns can use to fund that. Some use an expendable trust where they actually set aside assets more commonly, um, and not that this is better. This is probably the more common uh, thing that I see is that they put um, time frames for notification of leave um, in for retirements to try and at least uh, provide a warning so that you can budget annually yeah. the amount that is being spent out on these leaves. There's always things that you cannot predict in unforeseen retirements, but typically that's a fiscal measure that the towns employ so they can be notified and then budget and appropriate the funds. Um, certainly compensated absence trust, um, the trust funding would provide a little bit more flexibility in that, um, again, it, number one, would help you increase the net position by 
funding the liability and having an offset on the asset side of the uh, ledger and also again gives you flexibility um, you know beyond even some of the general timeline restraints that if for whatever reason there were a lot of people that left in any given year you'd be able to take the money from the trust fund and not have it impact the current period um, mainly what we're concerned <coughs> with when we look at this is does this liability into the historical trends create um, you know in an in inner period inequity where you're having to forego things in the current period to pay for this liability that was on the books I haven't seen that but certainly it always good it's always good to discuss um, the you know fiscal management options for dealing with that thank you I see it as a salient it is growing it's growing by 10 percent it's five percent of our budget give or take and uh, I think the board's prepared to address it going forward page 34 um, Gatsby 45 Mm -hmm. Could you compare and contrast and, and comment and how that relates, if at all, or differently from uh, uh, GASB 68 that you said is looming very soon? Sure. Um, GASB, real black and white, GASB 45 deals with health benefits and other types of programs other than retirement, and GASB 68 deals with retirement. Um, due to the nature of how everything works, um, the retirement piece is almost exclusively, I have clients with other retirement system but it's almost exclusively the New Hampshire retirement system net pension liability great thank you um, just one last question uh, and comment uh, director fantastic job fantastic audit uh, Scott could you share a little bit about your background your credentials and and share with our, our viewing audience a little bit about your firm sure um, I again work for Plaza and Sanderson um, we're an accounting firm out of Concord um, our municipal division performs over 135 municipal audits annually um, I've been with the firm for about eight years and prior to that I was in private accounting and um, in uh, private corporation prior to that um, and again we're unique in that normally um, most accounting firms do a little bit of municipal work and a lot of tax work um, we're about two-thirds municipal and um, we do have a, a traditional tax and accounting practice but this is our focus um, I tend to I, I've been in the lead on this audit for um, several years back when Mike was on board as well um, and typically um, again uh, supervise anywhere between um, you know typically around 30 30 municipal audits a year wonderful thank you we have great confidence in you director thank you thank you mr. chairman